Okay, let's have a look at the grid method today then. And um, we're going to see if we can do an example. I'm going to do two examples, talk you through what we're thinking, what we're talking about. Um, and then you guys will have a go. And then we'll have a see about different bits and pieces while we're doing it. So the first one we're going to have a look at today is going to be 5 multiplied by 34. So I've got 5 lots there, 5 groups of 34 in it. Now straight away I can see that 34 is quite a large number to do in my 5 times table. So I can look at this 34 and I'm going to partition it. I'm going to partition it into a 4 and into a 30. Now when I partition, as well as just breaking the number down into 30, and into 4, I have to think a little bit about what these numbers stand for. So that 4 stands for 4 1s. And I'm going to write in a place value counter there to say 1s. If we were in school, we'd have the place value counters out to use them. But because we're not, and because you guys probably don't have place value counters at home, I'm just going to write it in there. If that is for 4 1s, the 3 here stands for 3 tens. Now that's really useful to think about our numbers this way. We've got here our 1s, which is 4, and our 10s, which is 3. So we've got 4 1s and we've got 3 tens. When we break it down into the grid method, this way of thinking about the numbers will really help us to get the correct answer and to understand what's going on with the mathematics. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out the grid method. Now I'm going to try and do it as big as I can on my whiteboard that I've got here. You guys will have pieces of paper at home. Any sort of paper will be fine. It doesn't have to be squared paper. It could be any type of paper to do that. And I know that I'm going to break it down something like that. There's my grid that I'm going to have. I'm just going to pull the board down a bit so you can see almost everything on there. Okay. Now looking at this, my 5 goes straight away in this left-hand column. I'm going to put my multiplying sign in there. So I've got 5 multiplied by, and my first number I'm going to multiply by is going to go here. And I'm going to use, like we should do, the tens column. So the tens column goes here, our ones column will go here. My tens column, my tens number is 30. Another way of thinking of 30 is as three lots of 10, three tens. My four goes here. Again, another way of thinking of the four is four ones. Now, inside my grid here, I've got these two boxes. I've got this box here, and I've got this box here. Just so we can help our understanding with what's going on in the boxes, I'm going to write my number sentences in here and in here to show us. So I start with 5, and I'm doing 5 lots of 30. So I'm going to write that in, 5 times 30. Okay? I haven't done any multiplying yet, I haven't done any calculating. I'm just working out what I have to do before I do it. My next box here, I've got 5, and I'm going to multiply it by the 4. So the 5 multiplied by 4. 5 lots of 4. So I've got there my multiplying number sentences in place. Okay. Now, I'm pretty sure I know my 5s. And I'm pretty sure you guys at home know my, your fives. But sometimes we get a times table that we just don't know well enough to do in our head. And this is where we can sort of write down a table ladder to help us. I've got to the point here where I need to do some multiplying. Okay, So I'm going to write it down to help me down the side. So the first thing I'm going to write is five. Now I know my five times table a little bit. I know it goes five. 10, not sure of the next one. If I'm not quite sure at this point, because 
Our times table practice will come from our fluency, our times table rock stars. We're really focusing today on the grid method. We don't want our times table knowledge to hold us back from this. So we can really look at just using a table lab to help us. So I've got to 10. I know then I'm going to count 5. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm going to keep going, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, counting in five every time, okay? Using our fingers to help us is an amazing way of doing it, okay? 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Now, I could keep going, counting with my fingers. I know my times tables quite quickly, so I'm just going to jot these in to help us. You might need to do some more practice as we get to doing these times tables to do them nice and quickly. Okay? If that is the case, no worries. Take your time, use your fingers to help you. Now I'm going to stop when I get to 50. And I'm going to stop when I get to 50 because I know that 50 is 10 times 5. It's 10 times that five there. That's a really good point to stop at and it's a really good place just to check I really have got my table right when I get to my ten times. Now I'm going to go back to my grid now. I've got my table ladder which can help me. Okay, I've got my fives table ladder. I'm now going to jump over here. Now my fives table ladder, five times, I'm going to start with this one, 5 times 4, so I'm going to start here, 5 times 4, so 5, 10, 15, 20, there is 4 times 5, okay, or 5 times 4, we can flip it around depending on what we need to, I know 5 times 4 gives me 20, okay, so 5 times 4 gives me 20, and just so I remember that's my answer, I'm going to draw a little circle around it, okay, now, I jump to my tens column. I've got here 5 times 30. Now I've only gone up to 10 times here in my table ladder. How could I solve that 5 times 30? Now this is where our thinking of it as three tens comes in to help us. So if we think of this not as 5 times 30, but as 5 times 3 tens, Okay, we know that 5 times 3 is, that's a lot easier to work out 5 times 3 than 5 times 30. 5 times 3 tens is a lot easier. So 1, 2, 3, I get 15. I know that that is going to be 15, and I'm still calling it tens, 15 tens. When I change it back, I know that's going to be 100 and 50. So thinking of it, rather than thinking of it as 30, thinking of it as three tens really helps us when we're solving these bigger number equations. Okay. Now I've got my two answers to these mini equations, mini calculations, 5 times 30, 5 times 4. I've got 150, I've got 20. Over to the side, I'm going to do this as a column method. Now, some of you I know will be able to do this in your head, and that's amazing. But there will be some calculations using the grid method that we won't be able to do in our head. So it's good practice at the moment to get in the habit of doing a quick column method to help us out. It's also a good way of practicing our column method to make sure we don't forget it. So my ones column, I've got is it 0 add 0. 0 add 0 is going to be 0. In my tens column, I've got 5 tens, add 2 tens. 5 tens, add 2 tens. Mm, not really sure on this. Might have to get my fingers out. I'm pretty sure I know this, but for some of us, we might need some help. I've got 5 tens. I'm adding 2 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 10. And then in my hundreds column, I've got 100. I've got nothing here. It's 
an imaginary zero in there, okay, an invisible zero that I can't see, but it is there, I just can't see it. So I've got 100, add 0, 100, gives us 170. And my answer to this question is 170. Now, you're at home, a nice way of checking stuff at home, if you've got a calculator, if you've got a phone, if you've got a tablet, is to solve that 5 times 34 at home on your calculator. It will give us a little bit of calculator practice as well. Okay. Ticks behind it, the calculation is very similar. Now we've got 43 and we've got it five times. So we've got 43 five times. Now we could do 43 add 43 add 43 add 43 add 43. We could do it that way. But we know that this is to do with multiplying. And here we know it's going to be something to do with 43. And we've got five lots of that. Now it doesn't matter if we write it 5 multiplied by 43 or 43 multiplied by 5. We know that it's commutative, it can go either way round, it doesn't matter which way round it goes. And then from there, really simply, I create my grid method to solve that question. Okay, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, the answer is on the next slide, but if you were stuck on that question, that's the way to generate your number sentence from that. In another question, number 7 looks similar to this, we've got number 7 here, We've got 99s all the way around. And again, in a similar way to the bar model, it's representing that repetition of the 99 going round. Now, 99, bit of a fiddly number to do. And there is kind of a trick way of solving this, which I will go through with people now as well, if you've spotted a trick way. You can, again, generate your number sentence. I've got one, two, three, five again. Five, a nice number, just to work with while we're still recapping, while we're still reinforcing that number sentence. Five multiplied by 99, or I could treat it as 99 multiplied by five. Either way round, doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm going to get my book, grid method laid out on the grid for us, playing around with fives again, nice number. It also means I can keep my same um, number table ladder from earlier, okay? And I know that that's nine tens, so 90, and that is nine ones, okay? So I've got nine tens is 90, I've got five times 90, five times nine, tens is a nice way to think about it and I've got five times nine there. Now five times nine, I know five times ten is going to be fifty, so five times nine is going to be one five less, one five less than fifty. This is ten lots of five, this is five and it's only nine lots of it. So I know it's going to be 45, okay? So I know that one, five times nine is going to be 45. I know this one, it's going to be five times nine, which is 45, but it's five times nine tens. They're not going to be the same. Five times nine tens, I know is going to be 450, okay? If I add those two together, I'm going to quickly rub those out, Add those two together using my columns. 5 times plus 0 is 5. 4 plus 5 is 9. I get 499 as my. Right, we're going to have a little move on now. Just have a look at maybe is there some mistakes that we might have a look at. And I've got a question here on my whiteboard, which you might want to pause to have a look at. Um, and just see if you can spot a silly mistake that I might have made while I was doing this. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to have a look and try and spot my mistake. 
I'll go through it with us now. So um, if we look right at the start, we've got 5 multiplied by 44. Now, if I remember my 10s and my 1s on the top, just move that down so you can see, I've got 4 1s here. That's 4, that's 4 1s. Okay, easy to remember. This one is 4 10s, it's 40. 4 10s, nice easy way of looking at it. Now straight away when I go down here I can see, oh, what have they forgotten here? Here is where my mistake lies. Rather than doing 40, they've treated it as a 4. You have to remember that this is the 10s column. It's 40, or if we're thinking about it, four tens when we're doing it okay if we're looking at this five times four here that one's right they've got that right perfect well done mr hennessy this one we've got 40 five times four we could use that to help us we could treat that as four tens so five times four tens is going to be 200 i do my columns at the bottom to check i've added up i've got 200 add 20, 0 add 0 is 0, 0 tens add 2 tens is 2, imagine my invisible 0 in there, 2 add invisible 0, 2 hundreds add no hundreds is 220, so my answer is 220 to that. Hopefully you managed to spot my mistake, it is a mistake that some people do make, it's just forgetting that this tens column stands for the 40 or the four tens. Okay. Have a look now at a solve it game, which I will now just play to demonstrate for you. And then you can leave it up on the on your computer, on your tablet, on your phone, or whatever you're watching this on, just to have a look at how to play. And it's a lot more grid method practice for you to have a go. Okay, hi boys and girls, again, we're going to look now at the um, solve it, the problem solving bit of this. Now, you'll need something laid out similar to the way I have, and what you'll need is your trusty dice, um, or any way of generating a number. Um, a dice, you could go borrow from a board game. Um, if you don't have a dice, ask someone else to generate the numbers for you. Okay, stick to numbers under six, because that makes it a lot easier for us just to practice the grid method, just to start in before we start to push ourselves on to using it a bit in a bit more complicated ways tomorrow. So all I'm going to do, I've got my dice, I'm going to roll it to generate my numbers. My first number there, one, two, three, four. I'm going to pop in my uh, box at the top. I could put it anywhere. There's no rule to say I put it in the front one. I'm just going to put it there for now. I've then got a three. Now I'm going to put that in there. So it's three ones. Okay, remembering still my ones my tens, okay, and then my last number, I roll it, oh, I've got another four, okay, and I've got four there times 43, and then I go about solving that question, four times 43, I know that that stands for a 40, okay, another way of thinking of that again is four tens, boys and girls, okay, and I'm going to lay it out in my grid straight away, I'm getting quite quick at this now. I've done a lot of practice of it today, it has of you. So I've got 4 times 40. I'm going to write that in. And I know straight away I can use my 4 times 4 to help me. Because that's 4 times 4 tens. And then I've got 4 multiplied by 3. Again, 4 times 3. Um, I know my 4s. If I don't know my 4s, if I need some practice, I can write them down the side to help me. So 4, 8, 12. Oh, I'm a bit stuck there. I'm going to just count on. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. Playing it with a dice, you may end up with a number or a times table that you're not entirely happy with. Okay, and again, I'm going to stop there with my 10 times. I know that's 40. I've got 4 times 4 tens, so 4 times 4 to help me. 1, 2, 3, 4. I know that's 16. 16 tens. I'm good at that. I know I can place my 0 on the end. 
160. Amazing. Right. 4 times 3. 1, 2, 3. Oh, that gives me 12. And I'm going to do my columns there quickly. Seven te 6 tens add 1 ten is 7 tens. Remember my invisible zero if I need it. And I get 172. Now, a way of checking this would be to grab my trusty calculator, my phone, my tablet, whatever I'm on. I can pop it down there and I've got 4 multiplied by 43 and there's 172 to check my answer. Now, on the next slide, you've got, um, and I suggest you pause it on there, there are some different challenges for you to do as well. Once you've started to get the hang of using our dice to generate our number sentences, have a think and see, are the numbers on the dice possible um, for you to make the biggest possible numbers, the biggest even numbers, the biggest um, odd numbers as well? Could you draw it in a different way? We looked earlier about representing it as the bar model or the part whole. Could you do that? And then also, if you've got people at home that are free to play with you, brothers or sisters or mums and dads or grannies or whoever's looking after you at the moment, then there's the possibility of, right, can we make a game out of this? Can we roll the dice? Can we make some games out of it? And we're going to have a little look at a bit more game uh, style things with a dice tomorrow. Okay, Hope you get on okay with those questions, boys and girls. Um, it is the first video I've kind of done for this. Um, hopefully it helped. Hopefully you can see the type of maths we're trying to do. Um, and if you do think, oh, Mr. Hennessy, that was a bit rubbish, can you do this next time? Then um, get somebody to email us on the school website um, and we can have a look and try and do it slightly differently next time, try and make it a bit better um, and go from there. Okay, hopefully enjoy your mass today, boys and girls, and take care and keep safe. Talk to you soon. Bye.